Kendall, she never shied about her and can like shied away from talking about it. So it took a couple days before we got to John Mager, who publishes the Canadian UFO report. And before we get to that, we're going to take a short beer break and we're going to be right back. We're back. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, the event in question uh, took place over a couple of moments. Kendall and Wilson realized that what they were seeing, that they were going to need more people to see what, <laughs> what they were actually to verify, like what, this is really weird. Like we need somebody to do this, uh, to see this. And they sprinted down to the nurse's station where there are a couple of the other fellow nurses were gathered. Listen, it was a, this is a veteran move. I appreciate this move because they're in the geriatric ward. If I remember correctly, you got a bunch mm -hmm. of demented old people who can't see <laughs> getting like good, good eyes on this. <laughs> like that was a good move. I, I remember. They're like, sit back down, Frank. You ain't going to remember yeah. shit. <laughs> Uh, so they brought in, uh, in addition to themselves, they brought. Is that Jesus? Take me home. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Uh, they brought in a, a Mrs. Appleby and a Mrs. Clarkson who fell, who followed them back to the room where uh, Kendall had been looking out the window uh, upon the craft. Now, the craft had apparently already moved a fair distance away from the hospital, and all that they could really see, uh, what was described by the by the other nurses who who managed to to catch sight of it, was they they just saw this unusual bright fo floating light that they observed just kind of rotating away from the side of the, the hospital. And then one, uh, I think one comment from one of the nurses actually said that it, it ended up kind of moving away until it just took off at one point, like a, sh like a shot is what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Blast off. They obviously fixed whatever it was. Fucking going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. That's one. That was good. Uh, so what what's Get interesting about Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, shucks uh, one of the interesting uh, aspects of this case is that Kendall didn't really shy away about the the event in question like it, it said that she even she penned it down in the logs for the hospital about yeah. what she saw she charted and, it yeah. she charted it in the nurse's notes and she wrote it down like uh, Five was it five fifteen a.m. Yeah. Saw a flying saucer, D yeah. just 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 very the, the future very Mr. clinical, <laughs> yeah. very clinical, very just like you write it in there. Like I, you know, I've, I've written logs in the Navy, and it just sounds like something you would pen down, and you just be like, da, 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 you know, saw a UFO, and then right under that, be like, you know, main turbine pressure, 50, you know, one hundred and seventy. PSI, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it would just be something you just write in there in between those and like, uh, like fucking core oil temperature or something. Like you just write in there. Saw a UFO. Wait, what? <laughs> you saw what you UFO? say? Um, so she actually posed this and apparently she, she didn't really, if people who asked about it, she, she told everybody, she was telling everybody who, um, who asked about you it. Wouldn't believe I saw the two handsomest spacemen I ever did see. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, yeah, she seemed happy to, to talk about it. Um, but the, the, the report didn't really get any traction in terms of media coverage until like several days, uh, later, um, where the Victoria daily times, uh, actually, um, actually picked up the story uh, after it had been brought to the attention of one John Magor. 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 Make sure Magor. you really, really get the pronunciation. <laughs> of of Maple uh, Maple Bay, uh, British Columbia, who edited and publishes, as Zell said before, the Canadian UFO Report. Canadian UFO report. I'm pretty Very sure that's respected. how. Which, yeah, which I assume respected. is like the Canadian. Is that like the Canadian? It's the best version of, of any UFO report of the out there. Is like it like the country. APRO bulletin, which yeah, used to be? That's, the, that's, that's like the main the paper. Fucking, that's that's the Canadian Cosmopolitan. Yeah. Everyone sees it. It's Weekly. Everybody's mom's Canadian buying National it. Geographic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's our everywhere. Time magazine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everyone, every every Canadian dreams to be on the cover of Canadian UFO <laughs> Report. Canadian UFO reason, too, magazine. Like men's health. You Written, edited, and something. published by one person. <laughs> like. <laughs> Just jacked in like in your yeah. skin tight <laughs> uniform. 
<laughs> uh, so when the Victoria Daily Times picked up the story, um, apparently also that was uh, where a lot of this the story got actually printed twice uh, in the APRO bulletin. Apparently in the like November to December and the January to February editions, um, the APRO bulletin printed like. Uh, they commented this uh, when they when they originally printed the story. If people remember Apro, Apro is like the it's one of the precursors to MUFON, one of the first one of the one of the first like uh, civilian UFO investigatory bodies. And um, they even commented that they said they don't usually when when they caught wind of the story and they printed it in their in their newsletter, um, they didn't usually pre-print stuff until an investigation had a formal investigation had been done. And, but when they heard this one, they felt like they had to publish it, you know, strike while the irons irons hot. And they actually published, you know, details about what, what they had heard about and read in the Victoria daily times at the, at the time of the event. And I think that's because of there's certain professions that when they report these things, I think just get more respect for coming out with these and i to be honest i think nurse is one of them like when you say this is a nurse that reported this because these people are in charge of taking care like of of you know, the health and welfare of others so it's like if this person's crazy and not fit they're gonna m remove this person from their job if you're making claims and stuff like this and they're like and people legit think they're like this lady's now crazy like there could be serious ramifications for you coming forward. So to come forward with something like this and then be, have the backing of your peers and, and coworkers to me that I think that's why these kind of stories, people are like, well, shit, this isn't like, you know what I mean? Like Joe blow on the street. It is like, I seen it again. I seen it again. Right. It's every night they're up there. It, this is like a, it's a well put together, you know, professional woman. Absolutely. Yeah, it, the story had gotten out to the community. That's how uh, how um, John Magor had gotten the had actually gotten the information because it it came through like a family friend of his uh, that had talked to her. Who I guess also worked at the hospital, the same hospital that uh, Kendall island. worked on. So small yeah, island. it's a sm yeah, just like the whole story was probably just propagating throughout the community and being like, yeah, they saw something crazy at the hospital yeah. over there. And you fucking publish Canada, the Canadian UFO report. I guarantee you, you're like, <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> you're on it. <laughs> like, I don't think that he was wasting any time. Um, he, he's so funny though, because he's a little bit of a, I don't want to say worry wart, but he did say uh, that he believes that this is the start of a new 26 month cycle and it's just begun. And this time we may not be spared a peaceful invasion. So a little bit of a, he says this <laughs> time here. Not a <laughs> yeah, he goes on, he goes on a was doomsday it? rant. I'd be like yeah. this time. When was the other Batten time? Down the hatches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> First it was Get that goddamn star. Charlie red star. <laughs> and now they're here taking our women. <laughs> it's funny though because you said like this you know it spread throughout this town you know pretty fast but as fast as news can in the 1970s right like mm -hmm. yeah. newspaper and word of mouth like this is way before the internet age because you know we ended up finding out after the fact that there was other people that had sightings on the exact same day right one even yeah. before kendall saw hers well that's what i was going to ask so if a sighting was this bright and this vivid there must have been more witnesses besides just a couple the two nurses yeah. really seen it. There were some other nurses in the hospital who corroborated, like, yeah, we've seen a bright light, but they didn't really see the craft. So there must have been more people. If it was this this big, this bright, there had to have been more. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. So there was a report of a husband and wife who were leaving a New Year's Eve party at about 5 a.m., So which I think is a little bit actually before Kendall's encounter. Um, they witnessed the same described bright light above their house, and it was an oval-shaped craft emitting... Uh, multiple shafts of light towards a single shaft. They kind of described it as like a ch look, the same shape as a kid's uh, spinning top. And it was sitting there right above their house. And it sat there for a few seconds and then shot away just like Kendall had described. And then I guess later that day, this one's pretty cool. Um, Edith Beeling, a grade school teacher um, who was with several other staff and students at the time, uh, claimed to see a large flying craft above the Alexander Elementary School. Um, the craft was silently spin spinning, uh, had a large ring around it, which is a little bit different from what we've heard. Um, and she was saying that it looked like it was possibly changing 
in height, just dipping slowly, but she wasn't mm. sure. Like a, um, like a drone. Yeah, and but the interesting thing is, is she was unsure of the size, but estimated that a large plane could fit in it 15 times. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you wanna watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.